What's up everybody? We are live from the bunny barn with the baby bunnies who are going to be four weeks old tomorrow and their mom Storm. She's also with us today. How's everybody doing this morning? <laughs> they are crazy. They are zooming all around me. Oh my goodness. Welcome. So these guys are Holland Lap Bunnies. They are going to be four weeks old tomorrow and this is their mom Storm. She's going to join them at least for a little bit, as long as she behaves herself. We'll see. Can you guys hear me okay? Good morning, everybody. It's about 9.30 here in Ohio on a Saturday morning. We're going to try this again. I had some stream quality issues earlier in the week when I did the live stream, but we're out in the bunny barn now using the Wi-Fi straight from the router that's here in the bunny barn. So hopefully we maintain connection, but if for some reason it breaks, I'll probably call it quits for the day. All right, I'm going to test it out and see if I can hear myself. When I did oh. the live stream. Okay, I can hear myself. All right. <laughs> Yeah, I have it set to 480p quality again today just because our internet is so terrible. It really can't handle 720 and definitely not 1080. So sorry if the quality isn't the greatest, but you can still see the bunnies hopefully. Good morning, Jennifer from Ohio, nice. I know some of you in the West Coast, it's you know 6.30 in the morning, <laughs> which is pretty early. And then those of you farther east. It's later in the day on Saturday. I just got done feeding all of the bunnies and cleaning and vacuuming and sweeping and all that fun litter box cleaning. <laughs> so I thought this is a good time. We'll just have a quick live stream. Definitely not as long as the ones that I did on Tuesday. But for as long as our internet holds up, we'll stream here for at least a half hour, hopefully. Good morning, we've got Canada in the house, UK, New Jersey. <laughs> yeah, they are crazy right now. Some of their ears have locked, so we have, uh, let me see if I can find tuna here. Come here, tuna. Oh, come here. So little Tuna's ears, oh my goodness, Tuna, you were finishing that. Here, here, you want it? No, not if I'm gonna feed it. Tuna and little Bento. Both of their ears have lopped and the other ones haven't quite lopped yet. And that's not abnormal. You guys are making a mess of this, a mess. Hello from Chile, Illinois. It's been cold here too. I had to turn the heat back on here in the bunny barn. Storm, you be good. You don't you pee on that tunnel. Storm is not used to being in here or that litter box, so I'm going to give her some uh, <laughs> wiggle room on how litter box trained she's going to be in here. She peed in the litter box yesterday and then it splashed out. I think she might be going to the bathroom now. Be nice if they could keep it all in the litter box. Doesn't always happen. Oh, yeah, the carrot bowl. I think that's a very popular item on Amazon. 
It's a nice little ceramic bowl. It's really too big for food. So I thought, hey, for the babies, it's a, a good a good container for that. They like to sit in there and eat. You'll probably see them jump in there and eat. It snowed today, Morgan. That's crazy. Yeah, they're talking about later, it might be midweek, I think, that we might get some snow. It's not going to last long. It'll melt. Those of you just joining us, good morning. We are live from the bunny barn for as long as my Wi-Fi signal will hold out here. And these bunnies turn four weeks old tomorrow. They are Holland Lop bunnies. No, they're not for sale, not yet. And I don't know what bunny I might be keeping, if any, at this point. Their mom, Storm, is in here with us at the moment as well. They're all being very active. They were sound asleep in their uh, condo and I popped them in here and they just came alive like little popcorn. And they're all over me over here. <laughs> so if you don't know from the other stream, let me go over some of their names. So the little opal here, oh, it's okay, it's okay. Little opal is Tuna. The littlest orange, watch out Stormy. This is Bento. Bento is the smallest, but her ears have lopped. And I say her because they all look like girls to me. Statistically, that defies the odds, I know, but until I see evidence otherwise, they, they do look like little girls. The other orange, this is Cheese Whiz. We're going with a food theme here. So Cheese Whiz is bigger. Oh my goodness, you turned off my iPad, my tablet. Oh. Hash Brown turned off my tablet. Hang on a second, I can't see your questions. Oh. <laughs> so the little chestnut who turned off my tablet just now that oh, hang on I lost it again that was hash brown okay I got them back again and then this little cute broken cream this is omelette hi omelette Omelette's crazy, crazy, crazy. Okay, so here's, <laughs> this is the biggest one. This is Hash Brown. Hash Brown's the one who, yeah, she's a good little kisser most of the time. She likes to groom everything. Hi, mama. Storm's a good mama, aren't ya? Mm What is their favorite toy? Honestly, they don't play a lot with anything. They like to eat hay and make a mess, as you can see. They do like to chew on these. Um, this is a balsa wood toy that I got from Little Beast Treats online. They like that. Um, they like cardboard boxes, popping in and out of them. They have a cardboard box that has a little hole in it and they like to use that as their little hideout. They don't really like, they have little ball toys. They don't really play with those. They like this little tunnel, but they keep smashing it. <laughs> it's a little too flexible. They keep smooshing it down. Here, let's put it this way. Maybe they can see in it. Welcome, all 72 of you watching right now. Happy Saturday morning here in Ohio, earlier or later, depending on where you are. We have five baby bunnies and their mom and me. <laughs> We're all hanging out in the playpen in the bunny barn here. I've never used toys with corn, made of corn leaves, Karina. I don't know, honestly. I probably wouldn't chance it because I know corn isn't advised for rabbits. I don't know. It may be fine. I'm not, I don't have information for you. I'm sorry. One of the bunnies did parkour. <laughs> I missed it. Oh my. If you hear the rumbling, it's just my stomach. I'm sorry. I'm hungry. I haven't even eaten breakfast yet, but wanted to let you guys see the bunnies. <laughs> what are you doing? So that's Cheese Whiz right over here. 
I keep calling Cheese Whiz Trixie. I don't know why. It just, in my head, she look, she's a Trixie, but I named her Cheese Whiz, so. She has two names. Yeah, I buy them a lot of toys and they don't seem to use many of them. Oh, you did pee in the litter box. Good job, Storm, but you pooped outside of it. I'm gonna stretch my legs out. We'll see if they climb all over me. They usually do. <laughs> Oops. Hi guys. You just got Sherwood pellets and your bunny isn't seem, doesn't seem to enjoy them. That's very common. I liken it to trying to get a kid off of sugar, like a sugary cereal like Lucky Charms and eat something healthy like oatmeal. It can take a while and what you could try if you don't want to just be <laughs> patient is you could try, depending on the bunny's age, removing their pellets altogether, feeding hay only. And then when you do give the Sherwood pellets, they usually will really go after it with a voracious appetite because they haven't had pellets for a couple days. Otherwise, you can just, you know, mix some Sherwood in with their other food and continue to do, continue to do that, but you put a higher and higher percentage of Sherwood in compared to their old pellet. And it can take a few weeks, but I've never had a bunny not eventually transition to it. But if they are hooked on a different brand that has sweeteners and grain and all the things they love, it can take a while to transition to a food like Sherwood. Yeah, that's completely normal and frustrating, I know. Hi guys. They like to use me as a jungle gym. <laughs> Yeah, it took yours a couple months. Yeah, it, it, it can. Some bunnies switch readily. I think it depends on what food they've been on. Thanks for joining everybody, nearly a hundred of you. Thanks for spending your Saturday morning or Saturday afternoon, if you're across the globe, with us. These babies are four weeks old tomorrow. Holland Lot babies. And their mom Storm is in here. <laughs> Hi Stormy. I don't know where a good place is. <laughs> Can you see Storm over there? All right, let's move the tunnel over here, guys. Oh my goodness, you're just gonna crush it. You're just gonna crush it. <laughs> you guys are so silly and they're making a mess. <laughs> Thanks for the plug, Michael. Yeah, if you like this video, please smash that like button. Let me know. It helps the channel. It helps with the YouTube algorithm for this video. So let's get a like spike. Let's see if we can get to 60 likes here in the next two minutes. We're at 40 likes. <laughs> Stormy, what are you doing? Stormy. Come here, Storm. Storm wants to go behind the litter box. 42 likes. What are you doing, Mama? Oh, dear. 
I'm always afraid I'm going to sit on one of the babies. I had to be very careful. <laughs> Where is a good place to buy safe toys? You can find them at pet stores, Amazon. I suggest um, looking for the toys that are the untreated wood. If you can, get ones that are not colored because you don't know what the colorings are made of. There is a website called Little Beast Treats. Can you move for a second, Stormy? <laughs> Where you can get fun toys like this. Amazon. So these came from Little Beast Treats. Check it out if you're looking for safe toys for your bunny, chinchilla, guinea pig. <laughs> they do have names. I went over them before, but I can do it again. <laughs> There's a lot of banking going on. I don't know if you just saw that. That was Cheese Whiz. <laughs> so we have two oranges. Let me see if I can grab one here. Come here, Cheese Whiz. Watch out, Stormy. Oh, you're okay. You're okay. I know you don't want to stay still. This is Cheese Whiz. Cheese Whiz does not want to stay still. Oh my goodness, that one just fell. We have the fatty of the bunch. The little chestnut is uh, hash brown. The smaller orange over there is bento. The little broken cream here is omelet. And the little opal is tuna. Where is tuna? Tuna. Oh, she's back here. <laughs> so this is little tuna. Tuna is the only one that is the same color as one of the parents. The dad is Moose, my solid opal, who's over there sleeping right now. He's all flopped out. But yeah, so that's the only one the same as the parents. The mom is a blue-eyed white. And because the dad does not carry the, the Vienna gene that causes the blue-eyed white, None of these guys could be blue-eyed white. They have to have two of that gene, and the mom only can give them one. So they all carry, all of these guys carry the Vienna gene that causes the blue-eyed white coloring, but none of them can be blue-eyed white. Welcome, 106 of you watching. Hey, we're at 72 likes. Thanks so much, guys. Thank you for joining. And thanks for all the likes. Yeah, I'm glad you like these videos. It's a lot of work setting all this up, the camera, the charging cords. I have a phone running the stream. I have a tablet reading your questions. I've got lighting set up. Had to clean the playpen and clean the, the blanket so everything looked good. So yeah, it's a lot of work. So I'm glad you appreciate the stream. Thank you. Where do I get my hay? We buy it either at a local farm. I always... We get a bunch every fall when we can. And then this hay, this is Timothy hay that came from Small Pet Select. And I have a link that I will put in here after I'm done with the stream. I can't add it right now. Um, where you can get 15% off your first order. Gives me a little bit too, but you can totally shop on your own too as well. Um, they seem to have good quality hay. It can vary throughout the year depending on the harvest and where they get it. But... The bunnies seem to really like it, so that's the Timothy hay that they're eating right now out of this cute little carrot dish. They like to sit in here and eat it. Here, we'll put bento in there. Here, bento. That's usually what they're doing. They like to sit in there and eat. They eat a lot of food. <laughs> they're eating Sherwood baby pellets right now. You want me... <laughs> Who said that? You want me to boop the snoot? <laughs> We demand the snoots to be booped. All right, whose snoot wants booped? Bento, you have poop on your face. That's Yoko. You want, you want your snoot booped? How about we get little hash brown? <laughs> hash brown, we boop the snoot. Boop. She didn't like that. Look how fat hash brown is. She's always been the big one. Oh my goodness, someone is sniffing my back. <laughs> that was Storm. <laughs> I don't feed alfalfa hay to the babies. I could, but their food has alfalfa in it already. And I've never seen a need to give them more. 
If I had a baby that really was underweight, that might be something I would consider. But it's in their food already. Oh, there is a poopy. I need to get that. I need a paper towel. Or a piece of hay. That'll work. Somebody's poopy. Hang on a second. I gotta get a paper towel. Somebody dropped a secret trope. Smashed in the blanket. Well, I guess we're washing this blanket. That's nasty. That is nasty. <laughs> oh dear. Clean up on aisle five. All right, that's pretty good. The <laughs> storm is off off, yeah. She's a good girl too. She likes head pets a lot. Don't just throw me. <laughs> Storm's been a really good mom. Take done a good job feeding them. She's very tolerant of them. I caught her feeding them the other day and that was the cutest thing. <laughs> All these big bunnies flopped on their backs trying to drink. Yes, Andrew was asking about the dandelions. Our yard is covered in dandelions. It looks really pretty right now because they're nice and bright yellow. I don't like it when it turns into seeds, those little white wispy seeds and they're everywhere. But right now, yeah, there are dandelions everywhere and I've been picking them. The dandelion flowers and the leaves. And if you have dandelions, chances are you're not spraying. So um, they're usually pretty safe. I just wash them and then I will give them to the big bunnies. And the babies munch on it a little bit. And they're fine with that, especially because they're still getting milk from Storm. But if if they weren't nursing, I would be very careful with giving them no more than like a nibble at this age. I am not kissing Storm's tail. <laughs> I know what comes out of that area. Bento just booped it for you. <laughs> you can't see it. Hash Brown is climbing on me right now. There she goes. <laughs> Nipster, you're right. Mama got that big booty. Oh, Stormy. If only you knew that 100 people were watching your little tush. Your little tush. Oh, it's very soft. She's not gonna like me playing with it, so I won't. <laughs> oh my goodness. Good morning, those of you new. We have 156 people watching. Happy Saturday morning to you all, or Saturday afternoon, depending on where you are. These are five Hollow up baby bunnies who turn four weeks old tomorrow. They are all food themed names. We have Cheese Whiz and Bento, the two little oranges. The broken cream there is omelet. The opal here is tuna and the little chestnut that is behind the camera is hash brown. That is their mom Storm over here. Storm is a blue eyed white doe. David, if you are trying to find suggestions for treats for your bunnies, go to my website at ohiohollandlops.com. And on my website, I have a bunny care page and I have a whole list of treats, fruits and veggies and guidelines for amounts and ages. 
for what to feed your bunny. So ohiohollandlops.com. I can't add the link right now to the description. Once I'm done with the stream, I will. Yep, Olivia, you can feed your rabbit dandelions. Oh my goodness, that is storm. Her uh, Cora is digging at the hay over there. Oh my goodness, you missed that. What are you doing, Omelette? But yes, you can feed your rabbit dandelions. Unless, if it's this age, you know, just teeny tiny bite. I don't give my babies really any treats. JM, yes, Storm, I don't think she's completely deaf, but she is very hard of hearing. <laughs> she's very tolerant. Her babies are climbing on her. From what I have heard from breeders who work specifically with blue-eyed whites is sometimes when you breed a lot of blue-eyed whites together, their offspring can have some health issues such as being deaf. So I didn't breed Storm. I got her elsewhere, but from what I understand, that can happen. So I don't think she's deaf. She seems to, I, I can get her attention if I'm loud enough, but it, it takes a lot to startle her. Unless she has her back to me and then I touch her, she sometimes can get startled. So I'm careful, but she's very, very mellow and she really seems to have, I think we've developed a bond together, so. I like her a lot. Yep, Godie, I have dogs. They don't come in here, and if I have bunnies loose and they see the dog come by the, the door, the glass door, they get freaked out. We have two German Shepherds and then a lab, and I would not trust any of them with the bunnies, especially the babies. I wouldn't even trust my one cat with the baby bunnies. Hey, Cookie, you're welcome to join, but please no self-promotion. Thanks. Can you feed your rabbit grass instead of hay? I would, if it was dried grass and not sprayed, it really depends. Honestly, a lot of wet and green treats can be harsh on the digestive system and can lead to things like stasis. So I know people who do feed their rabbits grass. Dried is better, but I honestly, I don't, I'm not knowledgeable enough about the dietary content of grasses and the particular grasses to advise you on that. So I feed Timothy, this is Timothy Hay from Small Pet Select, and then I have an orchard grass with clover in it. They love the dried clover um, that we get from a local farm, and it has a lot of weeds in it too. And they don't eat a lot of it, but it's so cheap that we just, whatever they don't eat, we feed to the goats. Yeah, we have goats too. <laughs> If you have a rabbit with stasis symptoms, hasn't eat or pooped in days, ears are getting cold, that I would highly suggest emergency veterinary treatment. Um, probably they'll give IV or subcutaneous fluids, x-ray, make sure your bunny is hot. That really is something that I would not try treating myself if it's at this stage, Lewis. Yeah, GI stasis is no joke in rabbits. I've been through it and lost bunnies to it. And I do keep um, pain medicine called Medicam on hand, which that can help. Um, oral fluids, and then I also keep um, some subcutaneous fluids on hand. And I, I, it's no fun injecting them. My husband helps me. But when you have a rabbit in stasis and they're not eating or drinking, it's a matter of life and death. So if you if you don't have those on hand, you really need to get to a rabbit savvy vet, which those can be hard to find, I know. 
Yeah, Nipster, they do love oats. And I used to give oats more frequently. But now, since I've had some issues of stasis, I've stopped feeding oats because oats are a grain and grains can ferment poorly in their cecum, which is like a big digestion bat in their intestines. A few is probably fine, and I do give the babies a couple because they love them. But I'm very careful with how many I give my bigger bunnies. And every bunny is different. Some bunnies have rock solid digestion and count yourselves lucky, but others are just very sensitive. Hey, thanks for joining. Yeah, some of you I know who were in school during the week and probably missed Tuesday's live stream. Hopefully you could join today, which is one reason I wanted to get a live stream in on the weekend. I don't know if you can hear, Sunny Jim is snoring in the background. This is sleepy time for most of the bunnies right now, late morning throughout, early afternoon. And Sunny has always snored. It's like a squeak. <laughs> yeah, there are, they do have airplane ears, except for um, your tuna and bento. Oh, it's okay. Little bento here has lopped ears. Bento is the smallest, but her ears lopped the first which was surprising. And the biggest here is little hash brown. Sunny Jim, you are so loud. Can you hear him snoring? <sighs> yep, the big white rabbit over here, that's their mom. That's Storm. She's a really good girl. I like her a lot. It took her a while to get used to me. I got her in September. And this is her first litter with me. She's two years old. Kumar, if you go to my website, ohiohollandlops.com, take a look at the bunny care page. I have links and information about different types of bedding to use. I assume you mean for their litter box. I use compressed pine pellets that we buy in, I think, 40-pound bags from Tractor Supply or Rural King. You can also use Yesterday's News, which is a, um, I think it's a recycled newspaper pellet, and Carefresh Naturals, that's a shredded cardboard some people use newspaper. Yeah, Lori, when bunnies can make a buzzing sound, it almost sounds like a bee is nearby. And I do think it's definitely a hormonal sound. They're excited. My boys do that all the time because they constantly want girlfriends. Um, I've heard some of the, the females make it too. And I've heard people say that their spayed and neutered bunnies make it when they're excited. So yeah, they can make a buzzing sound. It's really funny to hear for the first time. The babies don't do it. So that definitely is something they can develop. It's cute. Hi, Stormy. Good afternoon or good morning. Storm's going to wake up and join us for a while. Oh, Storm, I'm not sure if you're going to fit in that tunnel. <laughs> yeah, the litter box, I really like this litter box in the back, and I believe it's out of stock on Amazon now. It's huge. Storm is right around five pounds. She's a false dwarf holland, and she fits perfectly in it, and there's room for another bunny. So even if you had a larger bunny, they can fit in that. The brand I think is Amakooft, but like I said, it's out of stock currently. There are other ones on Amazon that are much smaller, so you have to be careful and make sure you read the description. But I like it because it has an, a plastic grate, so it keeps your bunny up off of the mess. But it's a nice plastic grate, so it's not going to rust, and they really haven't chewed it much. Yes, Storm is awake. She's really active. Hi, sweetheart. Hi, girl. You're a good girl. <laughs> Scott, I'm just curious. Is your female bunny spayed? She's buzzing. I've had females buzz, but they're never spayed. So 
I'm just curious if a spade bunny will still make that noise. Storm is two years old, Sarah. Doom Notron, sorry if I botched your name. There's a new version of that litter box now. Do you know what brand? She's not spayed yet, Scott. Yeah, I'd be interested to see if if she gets spayed, if she still makes that noise. Because I'm I'm guessing it might be hormonally induced. <laughs> Olivia, when I'm pairing my rabbits, uh, there's a lot that I think about. Um, first and foremost, I, I really try not to breed two broken patterns together because that can lead to um, something called a Charlie, which is less than 10% color. And Charlies can have some digestive issues. I've learned over the years. So I that is something I consider. And then do their body types complement each other. So let's say I have a bunny whose front legs, um, they're kind of thin. That would be called, um, you know, uh, less than desired bone quality. I might match that bunny up with another bunny that has thick bone, nice thick, stocky, tree trunk-like front limbs, like the dad of this litter. Moose has really nice bone. Or if I have a bunny that has a nice wide head, I might pair them with a bunny who 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 doesn't. I mean, obviously, <laughs> I pair the best I have together. But I try to find if one bunny has a fault, something that's less than desired, I try to pair them with a rabbit that can improve on that, I, ideally. Hey guys, please know self-promotion. Thank you. Yep, uh, my adult bunnies go outside to play. I have five exercise pens just outside the bunny barn here. I have a covered porch that covers part of it. I have three trees. We have German shepherds and guinea fowl always on the prowl that can alert us to a predator like a hawk. It's something I'm, I'm alert for, but I'm not overly concerned. But if you don't have protective features like that, then you might want to consider putting a roof on your outdoor pen, netting of some sort maybe. If you have a rabbit who uses the litter box for urine, but not so much the poop, first I would definitely recommend spaying and neutering because that can help dramatically improve how thoroughly litter trained a rabbit is. My rabbits almost always use the litter boxes for urine. Even the babies are doing an excellent job, but unless you get your rabbit spayed or neutered, the poop is going to be everywhere. It's, they mark their territory. And if you're lucky, it's only with the poop it usually improves dramatically with spaying and neutering. You're still gonna find poops. They just can't help it. They're like little Pez dispensers. Hi, Omelette. Omelette is climbing on me. I have not tried using a water fountain with them, no. I know some people that have some sort of automatic waterers they've used with their bunnies. I would worry about the cord. You'd have to definitely get some cord protection on there because they like to chew everything. I'm always hearing of people that have lose, lost uh, charger cords to their rabbits. Sunny Jim, you are snoring so loudly. Yeah, they do seem to enjoy playing outside. It seems to be like after about an hour or so, they're, they're tired of it and ready to come in. And of course it depends on the weather. The hotter it is, the less they stay out. 
And if it's really hot, they don't go out at all. Stormy, face the camera. We don't want to see your backside, although it's kind of cute. How do you find a rabbit savvy vet? Call around to veterinarians, find a vet who frequently cares for rabbits and exotics. You might be able to get a recommendation from a vet of a vet they know will take care of rabbits. We have to go an hour pretty much in any direction to find a rabbit savvy vet. And yeah, it, it can be difficult. Our local vet doesn't care for rabbits. Um, they will help us inject uh, subcutaneous fluids if needed. But the only time that's ever happened has been on a weekend and they weren't open. So that's tough too. When you have an emergency, it seems almost always it's like on a Sunday or late Saturday night and no one is open except for emergency vets. And emergency vets often just don't really handle rabbits very much. And so you might not get the best care. It's tough. That's why I always advise, if you can, get a prescription for Medicam, which is a pain reliever anti-inflammatory. And that is given orally if your rabbit ever stops eating or drinking. And then you can do oral fluids. And if you're brave enough, you can inject IV fluids or subcutaneous fluids. And that usually can either reverse GI stasis if you catch it early enough or tidy you over until you can get to the vet. Because... Getting an x-ray can be important to make sure you don't have a blockage because blockage is bloat and that's different than GI stasis, which is just a slowdown of their gut. <laughs> Sorry if that's boring information. You can't hear Sunny Jim snoring? Oh my goodness. All right, I'll be quiet for a second. He just woke himself up. He's like my husband. He wakes himself up snoring. <laughs> Thanks for joining. I know you guys probably have busy Saturdays planned. You might not be able to stay long. I might stream for a little while longer depending on if our, our Wi-Fi seems to be holding up. So that's good. So you see how Omelet is sitting in the dish eating hay? That's what they do. And thankfully they really don't poop in here much. They tend to poop where they're eating hay. But this helps to contain some of the hay mess. And they have a box of hay and then a rack of hay too. They have plenty of hay. Oh, Storm just peed. Good girl, Stormy. Good girl. So when I'm litter training, I won't completely clean that litter box when I do clean it, just because they don't use this litter box often and I want it to smell a little bit like their litter box in their enclosure. So I'll clean it, but I won't scrub it until the babies have been in here enough. And that, that is a good way to help litter training as well as putting hay in the litter box because like I said, they tend to eat and poop at the same place. So you could hear the snoring. Yeah, it was like a little whistle, like a eh, eh. That's his snoring. Now he's eating, so he's up. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> hash brown sitting on my lap right now. You're so silly. Here, come here. Here you go. Yeah, storm spur is pretty white. She keeps it pretty clean. It's got to be difficult. I know I don't wear white clothes because it's so hard to keep white clean. So she does a pretty good job. Kumar, I don't know. No, I don't know why you keep asking that. I don't know. Yeah, your bunny can go outside. You just have to be careful about excessive heat, excessive cold. 
excessive sun, make sure they have some sort of a shelter and that they don't overheat. If you're going to leave them out longer than like an hour, I would put out water for them too. And make sure that they're safe from predators and not in an area with <laughs> grass that's been sprayed with chemicals. So there's a lot. Yeah, it, it can be risky. Honestly, if you have a house rabbit, there's no reason for your bunny to go outside. Keep them safe. So I will start weaning these guys right around seven to eight weeks usually. And what I often will do is I'll either take the bucks or the baby does out first, just so I'm not taking them all out at once because I know Storm's milk, she'll still have milk. So I don't want to take all the babies at once. I don't want her in pain and uncomfortable. But these guys all look like little girls. I keep checking them because I know it's not very likely that they're all girls being that there's five of them. Oh my goodness, <laughs> Storm. <laughs> that was a flop that went wrong. <laughs> um, so if I'm going to keep one, then that one would stay with Storm for a while. But otherwise, I will probably take a couple of the girls one day and then the rest of the girls a couple days later. The bunny's names, they're all named after foods. So the little opal here is tuna. The orange that's digging over there by mom, that is cheese whiz. The little orange that's behind the camera, hang on, let me get her. This is bento, like a little bento box because she's so little. This is omelet, the broken cream. And then over here, she's cleaning herself right now. The chestnut is hash brown. So we have hash brown, cheese whiz, bento, omelet and tuna so kind of a food theme you can put food in a bento box right so bento is just so tiny i thought it a bento box bento was suiting for her oh did you guys just see the flop <laughs> storm's flop that was epic How do I contain the hay? As most bunny owners will tell you, it's difficult. You can put it in the litter box and that does help. Some people have the style of litter box that's kind of like a cat litter box and it has four sides and that contains the hay pretty well. Um, I use cardboard boxes or I have these little tubs called tub trucks that are kind of flexible rubber tubs that I keep in the bunny's enclosures, except for Sunny Jim, he likes to spread his hay everywhere. Um, I do have hay racks too, and those do make a mess on the floor, the little bits that fall out. So really the neatest way is putting it in a litter box or a little container. I, I mean, I put it in here, but <laughs> not much can fit in here, and they make a mess. It's everywhere. Sweeping it with a broom, and then the little pieces I vacuum up with a shop vac. Do I find that females are less friendly? Honestly, no, it really depends on their personalities. Storm is very friendly. My doe, Cora, is very friendly. Camilla, Anna, those, I, I've had a lot of friendly does. I've had some bucks that just really crave attention and then others that can would rather find a girlfriend, take it or leave it. I think either way, spaying and neutering really helps with to calm them down and make them better pets but they're prey animals so some of them have a stronger prey instinct and just less desire for socialization with people they tend to like to interact with people on their own terms you know on the floor let them come to you they're different than cats or dogs certainly you think the dog is snoring again yeah that's sunny jim rabbits can sleep with their eyes open so it's kind of freaky because he, he'll sit there snoring and his eyes are open. 
But the telltale sign is if their nose is not moving. If their nose is moving, they're probably awake. Somebody is digging at my back. Who is it? Who is digging at my back? Oh, there's two of them back here. No, one. Who is it? Oh, it's Cheese Whiz. <laughs> oh my goodness, we have hash browns on my lap again. <laughs> Do Holland Lops make good pets? Yeah, for the most part, yes. But people need to understand they're not like a cat or a dog that you can typically carry them around and snuggle them. Sometimes they, you might have a rabbit that will come in your lap and let you pet them or they really don't mind you petting them. But they, they're different pets than cats or dogs. But when you spay and neuter them, they can make very good family pets, yes. But they're just not the same as a, a dog or cat. I've never given them a box with sand, Lori, no. They like to dig in. If I give them a box with hay, a lot of times my females who are not spayed like to really dig. My boys don't really dig. Sometimes they'll dig outside in the dirt. Storm, when she was pregnant, she dug holes like crazy outside, and I think it was her nesting instinct. Bento's over there, I think probably cleaning her, maybe eating her secret tropes. Who is, Cheese Whiz is still digging at my back. Cheese Whiz, what are you doing? Oh, wait. No. Who is that? It's Omelette. Omelette, is that you? Where are you digging? These are Holland Lop rabbits. What is my favorite rabbit breed? Other than Holland Lops. Mm. I think Flemish Giants are really neat. And from what I've read, they're generally very mellow. I think I'd be, I'd be afraid of how big their poops are and how much would they chew. I mean, they're huge. But they seem like gentle giants. So I guess they're intriguing. I don't think I would want to take care of one, but I think they're neat. But Hollands are the smallest of the lop breeds, which that's what really originally drew me to them. I like the little lop ears. They're so cute. Hi, Tuna. And the fact that they're the smallest of the lop breeds. If you're enjoying this video and like live streams and want me to do more, please smash that like button. Helps the channel out. I appreciate it. Hey, Armando. How's it going? Bun Bun Pie, you're thinking about getting a rabbit. Would you recommend a boy or a girl? I would recommend finding one with the personality you think you desire. And something to keep in mind is that a baby's personality can be completely different once their hormones kick in around four to six months of age. So the most ideal situation would be to go to a shelter or a rescue and find a rabbit that's already spayed or neutered. That way you don't have to deal with the surgery and the recuperation and you can see their true personality. And you're helping out a rabbit that needs a home. So check out a rescue and find a rabbit whose personality that you desire. It really can vary. Not all does and bucks have one type of personality. Hi, Hash Brown. Hash Brown's sitting in my lap again. Harlequins, yeah, that's a, a cute pattern. Harlequins are basically like the calico cats of the rabbit world. Orange, brown, black, or maybe orange, black, white. I don't have any Harlequins. They're not my favorite, honestly. Sunny Jim is snoring in the background if you hear a squeaking. 
Yeah, Nipster, my bunnies like to dig. Uh, sometimes they'll dig in, in this blanket here. Some rabbits have a really strong digging instinct and others not so much. When Callie and Cora are loose around the pen, they dig at, try to get a hold of the blanket edge and they'll pull it out and they've chewed holes in this blanket, the little stinkers. Oh, Harle the Harlequin breed. I'm, I've heard of that, yes. I'm not overly familiar with it. There is also a color pattern named Har called Harlequin. Tuna, you just did a roll. Flipped. Wow, bunnies in Singapore are $500 to $2,000. I don't know if that's in US. Because it is expensive. Sunny Jim, you are so noisy. Oh my goodness. We need to get Sunny Jim some of those breathe right strips so he doesn't snore. <laughs> He's had an x-ray. The vet didn't find anything obstructing his airway. He's always been that way. No storm's gonna munch on hay. You probably can't see her eyes. Hi, Stormy. She's so pretty. Oh, did you see the tuna roll? I didn't know if you caught it on camera. Okay, their names. Tuna is the little opal that's eating in the carrot dish. Bento is sleeping over here. Omelet is on the tunnel. That's their mom storm. We have the fatty here, a little hash brown, the chestnut. And then the big orange is Cheese Whiz. I also call her Trixie. I don't know why. She just kind of looks like a Trixie. Goodness, who is trying to climb in my lap? Storm, your poop missed the litter box. I'll help you. <laughs> Good morning, those of you just joining us. It is a little after 10 o'clock here in Ohio. 7 a.m. West Coasters are probably just getting up. Happy Saturday morning or Saturday afternoon, those of you on the east. Thanks for joining and thanks for hitting that like button. I appreciate it. Yes, I did have a, I've had two rabbits that weren't Holland Lops years, years, okay, decades ago when I was little, I had a Dutch rabbit. Um, and then before I got Holland Lops, I got a, um, he was a lion head Netherland dwarf mix named George. <laughs> As you can see, they're much more energetic than they've been in past live streams, even though this is sleepy time. Late morning to early afternoon is funny sleepy time. But they get short bursts of energy, as is Storm. It's at 4 p.m. in Belgium, so it's Saturday afternoon. Armando, Sunny Jim, he's not officially retired because he is certainly willing <laughs> to help me out with my the breeding program here and he still seems able I have no evidence yet that he's not fertile so as long as he's ready willing and able he'll he'll stay part of the breeding program but once he's not I mean I probably will still keep him I don't know it's tough because he's he's my oldest bunny he's he turned six in January, and I'm attached to him. But I do have his son, Fozzie. And Fozzie, still, he's still a little guy. What, about seven months now? It, it's hard to part with him. Can you exclusively feed your bunny third cut Timothy Hay? You heard it causes dental issues. I wouldn't say it causes dental issues. So those of you who don't know, hay has different cuttings. So first cutting, that's the first cut. It's coarser, it's real thick. This is second cutting. It's a little bit softer, a little bit thinner, a little bit more wispy. And then you have third cutting, which is even softer yet. I would say it's more like this. 
It's really soft and sorry for, <laughs> there's digging going on in the background. Speaking of digging, that's Cora and Callie digging in their, their uh, <laughs> hay tub. Um, so from what I know, the problem with third cutting can be if you have nothing else for your rabbit to chew on, the third cutting is not as effective at keeping your rabbit's teeth trimmed. That was a nice binky. <laughs> So rabbit's teeth, like our fingernails, they're constantly growing and they need things to chew on to trim them. So give them some chew toys, some rabbit safe chew toys, apple sticks that haven't been treated with um, any chemicals, wood chew toys, maybe some other varieties of hay, maybe some second cutting too. If you have a rabbit that has tooth issues and they need something more coarse, then that's when you might look into a first cutting. Older rabbits or rabbits that don't have teeth issues, third cutting can be okay. Um, now, I'm not an expert on the nutrition content of hay. That was a little hash from that just popped into the camera. Um, but in talking with Dr. Sherwood, who is the owner of Sherwood Pet, I know he said the hays really can vary in the concentration of their nutrients, first, second, or third cut. I know he recommended first or second cut. I think third cutting may, be more concentrated in nutrients. I may be wrong on that, but I'm pretty sure that's what he said. I don't know if they, that answers your question or not. Yeah, you saw omelets jump. That was a little binky. They're getting tired. They're a little bit tired. Whoops. Let's see how long my power cord is here. Hey guys, are we gonna sleepy sleepy? I think they are getting a little tired. Some rabbits really have a preference for the cutting that they eat. Mine seem fine with second. I think second cutting is a happy medium. You still have some of the, the nice thick stalks that really help with their teeth. And then you also have some soft ones too. So it's kind of the best in both worlds. I don't know if I'm keeping any of these. If I do, I might, I might keep one. That would be all. They are super cute. I don't know if I have a favorite. They're all so sweet. I did start feeding them a few oats as treats and Tuna here, the little opal who's licking my finger is really, really excited by the oats and as is hash brown, the chestnut and omelet. The two oranges can really take it or leave it. And mama loves them, but I don't give her many. This tunnel is from Amazon. I will put the links up later. I can't do it during the stream. I don't know why. It's it's silly how I have to run the stream. Um, let me just check my phone battery. Oh, we're good. We are good. Well, now we have omelet. <laughs> Ouch. Ouch. Okay, that one hurt. No. Here, do you want a toy? Hi, Stormy. You want to say hi to the camera? Oh! <laughs> no, don't flip the camera. Don't flip it. Yes, yeah, so you're very beautiful. That's Storm. <laughs> yeah, the, the baby bunnies do sleep a lot. It has definitely changed since they were first born. It's just like a human. <laughs> They sleep a lot at first and they get more active as they age. Look at Storm, she's two and she's pretty active. She's being a good girl, really. Some bunnies will probably pee all over the place in a, a different environment than they're used to. My hope is to use this exercise pen and maybe let the babies live in it while they're weaning. But for right now, they just come into play. Is it glitchy? It, it's our internet. It's not you. <laughs> if you're, it's probably our internet. I need. It's probably me moving the camera too. I need to leave it. It's what happens when you live in the boonies. You have slow internet. And sometimes people get. Um, 
bunnies that will maybe get kind of bored with their hay and you can kind of change it up with not only a different type of hay, but you can have different cuttings as well. And sometimes that will interest your bunny in eating more hay, which is good. They need that, the long fibers to push everything through their guts and ferment nicely in the cecum. Good gut health. But yeah, there's um, oat hay is okay. Uh, orchard grass, Timothy, there might be some others, but those are the most common. Timothy and orchard grass being the most common of those. I tried oat hay from Small Pet Select. My rabbits didn't really like it a whole lot. It was, I think it was a little bit old. It was pretty dry. Here, let's come closer to the camera, guys. Ooh, there we go. Was my stomach growling. Good, I'm glad you can hear me okay. I didn't put the microphone on the camera, the external mic. I was afraid they would chew the cord or the microphone, so I'm just using the camera mic. Oh, so this is little Cheese Whiz that I'm petting right now. Cheese Whiz and Hash Brown are the largest, but look at these giant ears. They have not lopped yet, which that is crazy. Something else, I don't know if you can see it, Cheese Whiz has a little tuft of fur on her left ear. A little, one little long tuft of fur. I'm sure you can't see it on camera. But what's funny is their dad, Moose, also has a little tuft of longer fur on his right ear. And I've never seen that in any other bunny. But to have his daughter have the same thing, and that's probably always going to be a long tuft of fur. No matter if, you know, when it molts, it's just going to be a long tough to fur. So I think that's interesting. Very interesting. And a couple of these have more plush coats than the other ones. Cheese Whiz has a more plush coat and so does Omelette. These two right here have a little bit more plush coats. The dad has a plush coat as well. He's not a fuzzy, but his coat is just more luxurious and long. And then you have the other three. It's just a typical short Holland coat, not as plush. And these are also their baby coats. They will molt these out here in a few months, probably. Hi, Storm. She's back here snuggling. Oh my goodness, Stormy, Stormy. The, oh, you wanna see the, I'm gonna unplug the camera. Hopefully it doesn't cut us out. All right, hang on. Okay, we're good. Now I can move the camera around. Hopefully it doesn't ruin the quality. You want to see a better shot of them. So that's hash brown, bento, omelet, cheese whiz. We have mama over here. That's Storm. Hi Stormy. You can't hear me, I know. And then little tuna, the opal, is over here. Let's get a good shot of tuna. Hi mama. <laughs> oh, don't eat the charging cable. No. Hang on a second. All right, we'll go without the charging cable. Uh -huh. Glad you're enjoying all my videos. It's, it's a lot of work. I have other things to take care of. I have household duties and the lop shop where I sew things and bunnies to take care of, my kids to take care of. And so it's a lot of work filming videos and editing, editing them too. So these live streams are a little bit easier just because I don't have to edit. Hey mama, are you eating your hay? If I sell bunnies, I don't sell them any younger than eight weeks of age. Storm is a cute girl. Her personality has really changed. When I first got her in September, I mean, she wasn't really skittish, but she didn't really 
let me pet her a whole lot. And now she is very welcoming of pets and she will lie down and just chomp her teeth and purr if I give her a head pet. She really loves it. Hey, I, I feel you back there, little tuna. <laughs> set this back down. Hang on a second. <laughs> Sorry. Get the tripod out again. Okay. I'll probably raise it up. Oh, that might be better. Melanie, that's a good question. Sometimes bunnies just don't like to eat much hay. And first thing is I would find a hay that has a lot of fiber in it. I know Sherwood in particular has different formulas based on if your bunny is a good hay eater or not. I feed the free choice Sherwood pellet that has alfalfa and Timothy and it is not a concentrated pellet so you can free feed it but it does have a good amount of fiber in it so feeding a hay that is for bunnies who don't eat a lot of uh, or feeding a food that is for bunnies that don't eat a lot of hay that can be one thing to try um, as I mentioned before oops did we, hang on a second okay there we go as I mentioned before trying different hay types trying different hay cuttings that can help too also, Dr. Sherwood suggested to me, and I've tried it before and I can verify that it works, is you can, and I would have to say check with your vet first, but you can consider making your rabbit fast on hay, hay only, for a week, even a couple weeks. And that usually will wean them off the dependence of pellets and it might revitalize their interest in hay. You can even try it for a few days. But, you know, consult your veterinarian. Tuna is an independent bunny. Tuna usually is joining in the heap. I think she just, she wasn't ready to sleep yet. She's just been running around here. But she is kind of usually more on, uh, I don't want to say, she's a little more mellow, I guess. Not really independent. Now she's going to lick me. You're a good licker, Tuna. Tuna is just so adorable. Oh, my goodness. The litter box is from Amazon. It is the Amacooft brand, but I believe it's out of stock right now. No, I am not. I don't let the dad in with the babies. He is not neutered and he would very likely hurt them. If he were neutered, I could find him a suitable bonding mate, perhaps. But the problem with bonding is it doesn't always work. It can take a lot of time and patience and persistence. And sometimes it just doesn't work. And then you have to have separate housing facilities for them. It's great when it works, and I think a lot of bunnies really love it. And I think they benefit from that. And I do have bonding tips on my website. Um, if you have a bunny and you're looking for a mate for your bunny, get your bunny spayed or neutered, let your bunny heal for like a month. Try going to a rescue or a shelter. Sometimes they let you bring your rabbit and have kind of like a speed dating session with their available spayed and neutered bunnies, that is honestly the best way, I think, to find a mate. Because you might find another bunny that just kind of clicks with your bunny. Yep, Storm's just chilling now. Cora and Callie are digging in their hay box, so that's probably what you hear in the background. Tuna's still playing. Tuna, yeah, you are super cute. <laughs> 
All right, you think Tuna's cute, and then you see her tummy. She's even cuter. Hi, sweetheart. Oh, you're going to kiss me. Kiss my dry finger. <laughs> oh, my goodness. There you go. Am I going to keep Tuna? <sighs> Probably not. If I did keep any, and this is just, at this point, my thinking is possibly omelet only because I have well storm is actually a broken pattern but I would like another broken pattern dough and I have right now three solid bucks that I could pair her with I have Sunny and Fozzie and well actually no I cannot moose because that's her dad um so I'm thinking about that probably won't keep tuna I thought about it tuna looks like a true dwarf so she'll be on the smaller side. I like to keep larger false dwarf does for breeding. They have an easier time and then peanut bunnies. So I probably won't keep tuna, although I, I really like them all, but she's one of my favorites. Um, probably my other favorite would, I guess would be Hash, Hash Browns <laughs> likes to ki give kisses. They all have their own unique personalities that are fluidly developing. Yeah, they're all super cute. It's hard to pick a favorite. Yep, Moose is the dad. He's over there eating hay. <laughs> He'll go outside later. All right, we're going to wrap this up here in a few minutes, guys. Any last minute questions, feel free to ask and I will try to answer. If you haven't already done so, please smash that like button. You know that the like button changes colors once you smash it. Press that like button. Much appreciated. Sonny Jim was snoring. He's not snoring right now. He's grooming himself. I hope you've enjoyed this Saturday live stream. Oh my goodness. Come here, Tuna. Come here, Tuna. Join the bunch. Little Tuna. Tuna. So cute. Yes, you are. Yeah, there's two of these have their ears lopped. Little the two littlest, Bento and then little um oh, it's okay, little tuna here have their ears mostly lopped. Which is usually opposite. It's it's usually the larger ears that lop first. Yeah, tuna's so cute. Tuna is not ready to sleep. She's like that kid that's hyped up on sugar and now storms back up eating again. I don't know if you can see Omelet. Omelet is just sprawled out here. Just chilling. Yeah, they kind of pull their ears back when they sleep. Yeah, that tune is pretty cute. Hi, Stormy. Hi, girl. <laughs> Storm's back here getting pet. <laughs> All right, guys, we're going to wrap up the stream. I've got to go eat breakfast and do laundry and sew some things. And I, I have to do There's cleaning. I'm sure there's cleaning that needs done. <laughs> But the bunnies are fed and cleaned, and they will go outside later today. Except for the babies. They don't go outside. They'll play in here. Hi, Storm. Storm's... <laughs> She's back here with me. She's such a good girl. Thanks so much for joining and spending 
a part of your Saturday with me. I appreciate it. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications if you want to be notified when I go live next because if, if these streams seem to be working out in the bunny barn here where the Wi-Fi is a little bit stronger, then I might keep doing them if you guys like them. So thanks a lot for joining and 